How's work in nuclear physics these days? Well, it's hush hush government work. I know. You're working on the Manhattan Project. I'm in OSS. It's the Office of Strategic Services. Around Washington, we're called the Cloak and Dagger. Well, I do feel that this is a great loss. Uh, speaking now of one of the most difficult things to do well, and this was the mystery, uh, mystery shows that we did very well on Inner Sanctum. That especially is a great loss. I do not care how well a mystery show is done on television, you cannot expect to vie with the power of your own imagination. And your own imagination will build the most beautiful sets and will make the most horrible things more horrible. It is your imagination. Thousands of allied scientists are working together to make what? A bomb! If anybody's going to develop the atom bomb, you want it to be us, not the Nazis. Corey Ford was an American humorist, author, outdoorsman, screenwriter, an occasional member of the famed Algonquin Roundtable in New York City. He penned several famous works, including the 1946 Cloak and Dagger. It became a film starring Gary Cooper, Lily Palmer, and Robert Alda. It's the story of an undercover agent for the Office of Strategic Services during World War II. He's on a mission to make contact with a Hungarian nuclear physicist and thwart German nuclear project. The film earned more than $4.5 million at the box office. In May of 1950, NBC brought a version of these tales to the air as part of their Sunday afternoon block of mystery programs. It would be produced in New York and star some of the East Coast's most famous character actors like Raymond Edward Johnson, Joseph Julian, Lily Darvis, Everett Sloan, and Santos Ortega. Cloak and Dagger debuted on May 7th. You're about to hear a new NBC presentation, Cloak and Dagger, program number one in 90 minutes of continuous mystery and suspense on NBC. Following Cloak and Dagger, stay tuned for High Adventure. Then listen to The Big Guy, NBC's new unique mystery series. But first, Cloak and Dagger. Are you willing to undertake a dangerous mission for the United States, knowing in advance you may never return alive? What you have just heard is a question asked during the war of agents of the OSS, ordinary citizens who to this question answered, yes. We have the honor at this time to present a former OSS officer, co-author of the book Cloak and Dagger, upon which this series is based, Colonel Corey Ford. Thank you. OSS, the Office of Strategic Services, was America's top secret intelligence agency during the war. It was this country's first all-out effort in black warfare, dropping undercover operators behind enemy lines, organizing local partisans to blow bridges and dynamite tunnels, outwitting the best spy systems of Europe and Asia. The success of OSS is known, but the story behind that success, the story of the everyday, average Americans of every race and creed and color who risked their lives knowing all too well that if they were caught, they would face torture and probably death, is what Alastair McBain and I have tried to tell in Cloak and Dagger. We feel it is a story in which every American can take deep pride. <laughs> The National Broadcasting Company takes you behind the scenes of a war that nobody knew. This is Cloak and Dagger. My name is Friedrich Schmidt. I'm a German soldier. I had a medical discharge from the Army. I was in the 268th Infantry Division. My family was killed in an air raid near Berlin. My name is Friedrich Schmidt. I'm a German soldier. I repeat it over and over again so I won't forget... My name is Friedrich Schmidt. Ah. 
Where did I go wrong? Where did I go wrong? Think back and remember. From the beginning. Everything the colonel told me to remember. Remember, Frank, from now on you'll be Friedrich Schmidt, German soldier. You have your military pass, forged signatures of adjutants, hospital certificates, ration coupons, permit to travel. You know what to do. Yes, Colonel. Carl and I parachute behind the enemy lines in Austria. We radio back information on the strength and location of German troops around Innsbruck. You realize there'll be no help from headquarters? No contact waiting for you below? Well, sir, Carl knows the country and his sister is still living there. I uh, needn't tell you the risk you're taking. Of course, you'll land in American uniform, so in case you're picked up immediately, you'll be treated as prisoners of war. However, later, if you're caught out of uniform in enemy country, uh... I think I know what to expect, sir. All right, then. Just one more thing. The information we're after is vital. The Third Army is closing in fast, and we must know what's ahead for them. I'll expect your first message in ten days. You'll have it, sir. Oh, and, uh, by the way, Colonel. Yes? Don't forget to have that package mailed to Rhode Island for me next month. It's my father's birthday. Cigarette, Frank? Thanks, Carl. Carl, I, uh... Yes, what is it? About Liesel. About your sister. Oh, what about her? You haven't seen her for over five years. <laughs> over six years. Well, uh, six years is a long time. Running uh, in. That's oh. us. Get ready to jump. Yeah. What did you uh, want to ask about Liesel? Oh, nothing. Forget it. Ready, number one. Ready. Jump. I'll see you downstairs. Ready, number two. Ready. Good luck, Frank. Go. I heard the crack of the parachute as it snapped open. I looked down. I saw a patch of snow in the valley, spreading wider and wider in the moonlight, like a blot of milk spilled on a kitchen table. And I thought of Carl's sister, and the question I didn't have the courage to ask him. You all right, Frank? Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, well, we made it. The first step. Yeah. You got everything? The radio all right? Just checked it. Nothing broke. Good. Uh, there goes the plane. Yeah. Heading back. He's gone. Let's go while it's dark. Sun's starting to come up. Yeah, keep that cape around you. There'll be people on this road soon. What do you think about that sun? <laughs> what about it? Astronomers must be nuts. That can't be the same sun I used to see back in Providence. <laughs> Maybe it isn't. Schlaf nun ein, schlaf nun ein, die Nacht ist da der Morgen Hey, what is that? You've been singing that for hours. What is that, a kid's lullaby? Eh? I made it up. Oh? Made it up for Liesel when she was a little girl. I used to sing her to sleep with it. Oh. Frank? Yeah? On the plane, before we jumped, there was something you wanted to ask me about her. What was it? Listen, eh? here comes a cart. Watch your cape. Don't let the wind blow it. Yeah. Heil Hitler. Good morning, Fräulein. Heil Hitler. How many kilometers until the railroad station? About two kilometers. Ah. Feeling dark. Danke schön. Good, only two more. Uh, this rucksack weighs a ton. Hope there's no standing room on that train. I hope there aren't too many German officers. Come on. 22 episodes aired, with four preemptions over the next 26 weeks. With no sponsorship ensuing... 
NBC canceled High Adventure on October 8th, Cloak and Dagger after October 22nd, and The Big Guy after October 29th. The network lacked the patience of CBS to sustain costs in growing their own internal productions. German soldiers will be willing to give up theirs. That obliging they are not. Well, so far they've been. Let us have a nice compartment all to ourselves.